Why do we not trust or believe our government? This is an important question to answer, and I try to do that in this video. Thank you for watching. My name is Glenn Morgan, and this is We the Govern. So, as I started out the video here, why do we not trust or believe in government? And I guess when I say that, I really mean that anybody who's an activist or who wants to get engaged and involved in the political process ends up realizing that mostly what you're trying to do is look at what's being done currently and you want to fix it, you want to change it, you want to reform it, you want to replace it. There's some engagement that you have in some ways, you're probably not satisfied with what government is doing today. You want to make it better, that's the whole point. But the question is, what happens when it rises to a higher level where there's a much greater percentage of the population it appears to be uh, not satisfied with the direction of the country or what's happening in your local community or your school board? And what is it that kind of motivates people to start to engage and get involved? Well, real specifically, one of the things that tends to happen is people feel like they're being lied to, right? These pol politicians it just, they lie all the time. And I think governments probably always lied at times to protect themselves, to make themselves not look so bad. Uh, it is, this is not a partisan thing. It's just the way, the nature of power that oftentimes somebody gets in government and yes, they do seem to lie. And they do seem to lie a lot. They just, it's something that happens. And the political elite, the more they get, the more they lie and get away with it, I think that's when they seem to be able to do more and more of it. And it's frustrating, and it feels like a double standard. Uh, there's always the joke that uh, Bill Murray had, right, that if you lie to the government, you're going to be, it's a felony, but if they lie to us, it's just politics. Uh, and this has been a common concern that people have, is why do they keep lying to us? We try to expose them as activists and show that that's not true or that they're misleading us. And of course, that's the important things, with, that's the important role that media has to play. But it's not just lying, it's also just phenomenal blundering and competence on scales that really most rational and normal people can't conceive of screwing up that significantly. The more obvious thing with the Afghanistan uh, debacle, where basically, uh, you know, the country that's a, at a worldwide scale, uh, America ridiculed itself with one of the most bungled and competent uh, departures from a country uh, coming out of a war zone that you've ever seen before, including leaving massive amounts of military hardware, just billions and billions, tens of billions of dollars in military hardware behind and just a seemingly uh, epic level of incompetence on a scale that most people can't even comprehend. And you think, how can anybody be that incompetent in government? I mean, what the heck? Don't we vet these guys in some degree before we put them up there? I mean, don't they have some level, even a basic level of intelligence tests or just something that would prevent them from being so incompetent? But that doesn't seem to be the case, because even when you look at local government, uh, local government is egregiously incompetent at almost every single scale and every single level and every single place you look. If there's two or more bureaucrats gathered, there's going to be some level of incompetence, and we seem to find that everywhere we go. Washington State's, um, the, the, uh, recently when they lost over a billion dollars out of the Unemployment Securities Fund, uh, and then they couldn't figure it out, and they said it was Nigerian fraudsters. And uh, Susie Levine was the person who was appointed to run this agency by uh, uh, Governor Inslee. And this bungling level of incompetence, and yet they still expect us to think, hey, these guys really know what's going on, because they don't. And, and then they want us to come out and say, listen, yeah, okay, we lost a billion dollars in the Employment Security Department, but trust us, we really have these elections under control. Does anybody believe these people? Not when all evidence points to just egregious incompetence every time you lift up the covers and look under what's, you know, what they're trying to hide, look behind the curtain and see what they're doing. Incompetence is a common part of what happens. It's not just corruption, corruption's there too, but incompetence seems to be exceptionally common. And, uh, and more and more, the bigger government gets. And so that disgruntles people and people don't like that. So can these guys do anything right? Is there anything government does right and well today? And the truth is that to answer that question with a yes, it's a smaller and smaller piece of what government does that the majority of people would think, yeah, that's, that's done really well. Uh, any type of interaction that you have with government tends to create the impression and experience that, God, these guys don't know what's going on or they are really incompetent. 
And it doesn't matter when we're talking about homelessness, uh, just focused in the Seattle area alone. Seattle, Olympia, Spokane, Bellingham, it's a fiasco. And it's an epic fiasco that's uh, totally mishandled at every step of the process. In fact, it looks like what government does is they take as much money as they can extract from the taxpayers, hand it out to the most, uh, the most untransparent group of bureaucrats and basically transfer uh, that, that, who transfer that money out there and we don't even know where it goes or whether it's helping solve any of the problems that we're trying to solve. So homelessness is one of the things that's definitely popped up on our radar and becomes something uh, that's, that serves as an example of how government is failing and that it's incompetent and that they're just turning into a disaster. That led to the documentary in Seattle about Seattle's dying, which has been viewed all around the country as an example of a progressive city that is basically uh, cratering itself as fast as they possibly can with the policies that they implement. Then there comes the crime wave that's going on, and not even violence. I mean, violent crime wave in Washington state has escalated and gotten worse than it's ever been before. That being said, uh, it's really, what really impacts most people, it's not just the scary headlines of the increased murder rate or um, violent uh, robberies or things like that, but it's even just the lifestyle things where your cars uh, are gonna be broken into, sometimes in mass. I had a friend of mine who every tire of, of all the cars in the parking lot at his apartment complex, East Hill Kent, all the tires were slashed. And then another apartment just a little ways over had all the catalytic converters stolen. Uh, you can't go to the store without observing massive shoplifting uh, operations that are going on or they're trying to restrain your ability from being able to access the goods because the shoplifting's become so prolific and prevalent. And the uh, soft on crime approach that local government has decided to have in these communities is clearly failing in every measurable way. These are the kind of things that affect people's real life and so they're not happy with where things are going and that doesn't make them trust the people in charge because they don't feel safe. Now, I'm always concerned about this because safety and liberty are oftentimes used as uh, opposite ends of the spectrum, saying that, uh, well, to make you more safe, all we have to do is just take away a little bit more of your freedom, right? That's the excuse that Governor Inslee uses, and that's the excuse that, uh, that uh, basically politicians and uh, leaders of countries have used for generations as a way to get, make you more safe, trust us, we're with the government, and we'll take away your freedoms, and as it turns out, that's not safe at all because they're not honest, and they tend to be corrupt, and they're incompetent at best. And so this is a real problem. This is a dynamic that we're having to face and, and try to address. Now, normally, we would try to trust the media to tell us what's going on. Uh, the traditional media has always stood as that bulwark against tyranny because, after all, they are going to be a speak truth to power, right, and question what's going on. Uh, but unfortunately, most of the media is co-opted into whatever the government's policy agenda and program really is. And this decreasing trust in the media is largely because they don't question authority at all the way they used to, and or at least the way we imagine they used to. And so this sense that nobody's really paying attention to what's happening, at least none of the people that have become these self-appointed arbiters of truth, are they really telling us the truth? Does anybody believe that CNN's reporting the truth? Of course not. Nobody does. And so that's part of the problem. So a lot of people are concerned about it. And then you have the tech giants that seem to be more focused on censoring anybody that doesn't toe the line with whatever agenda that they have than in reporting and exposing the truth. I think new media really represents this opportunity to uh, fill in the void that's created by kind of a groupthink monolithic uh, media complex that's out there. But when the tech giants are there to suppress free speech with a new media, that's another part of the problem. And that increases uh, the concerns that average people have about that they're not being told the truth because what are you gonna believe? What you're being told or what you see with your lying eyes? And most people just aren't gonna believe what the media is telling them when it's becoming so obvious that there's something seriously wrong here. So big government oftentimes wants to tell you just to trust them, to obey them. And uh, that's a really negative response. Most Americans actually want to be relatively independent. They want to at least believe they are. And when government's telling them, just trust us, we don't trust you. We want to question authority. And uh, but the problem, of course, is that over time, those who used to want to question authority, now they're saying that anybody who questions authority is a terrorist or anybody who questions authority is an insurrectionist. How dare you? So this is kind of the trend line that we've been on. And this really 
creates a lot of problems, I think, in the communities. Because when you wonder why we don't trust government, it's because of the people who are in charge. It's guys like this. Governor Inslee's hardly somebody to inspire trust in government. And he's not alone. Uh, to be fair to Mr. Inslee, there's a lot of other people that have joined him on stage as being incompetent and corrupt all around the state or hypocritical in how they uh, are all around the country, too. And that really is the kind of thing that makes people not trust government. But it's also just this egregious bureaucrat class that seems to be completely incompetent in every measurable way, or corrupt, or combination of the two. Sometimes it's an ocean of incompetence that's concealing a mountain of corruption, and it's very difficult to see exactly where the corruption ends and the incompetence begins. But unfortunately, those have become synonymous with government, and it leads to this level of mistrust, or at least the average mistrust, that we see increasing over time with most Americans, I think. And I'm from Washington State, so I'm going to focus on local issues here, but I think these issues apply no matter where you are in the country. So we should question authority, and that's the whole point. Why be an activist if you're afraid to question authority? Why set up a website? Why report on what's going on? Why file Public Records Act requests? Why look through the public disclosure documents to see if these guys are lying to you about their financial affairs documents? Why do any of that unless you're willing to question authority? And ultimately, that's what every activist has to do. We have to be willing to question authority because we don't trust the government. And uh, it's not trust but verify, it's mistrust and then verify. <laughs> that's really probably the way we have to look at it. So I want to encourage you, if you want to get involved and engaged, make sure you go and show up. You have to get out there and get engaged. It will not change itself on its own. It's going to take a lot of us to be engaged and involved to make an impact. So if you want to learn more, go to wethegovern.com. Also, I'll link to some other um, uh, relevant articles uh, down below. I encourage you to, uh, to attend my uh, consequential activism training classes or classes put on by other people, help you become more effective. But in the end, it's all about questioning authority and being willing to show up because the future belongs to those who show up.